It's Madden NFL 22 on EA Sports, where division rivals will clash in the AFC South. It's the Jaguars and the Colts on Monday night. It's the National Football League, presented by EA Sports. Just a short time ago, smoke from the pyrotechnics filled the dome as the Colts made their way out of the locker room. We're set for football as the Colts get set to match up with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Brandon Gordon alongside my good friend Charles Davis. And Charles, so often it's the quarterbacks that are in the spotlight, and in this game, no different. We have a very compelling matchup. We do indeed, and something I'm going to be watching for. Who can get off to a fast start? If you can go out and get points on the first drive, preferably a touchdown, you can really set the tone for the game. And I think that both of these quarterbacks are more than capable of doing just that. turn from just beyond the goal line and the decision to bring it out not a good one as he's tackled at the 15 so the Colts now coming out for their opening drive and leading them out there their 6-5 quarterback and what I enjoyed watching this week when we had a chance to watch them at practice the easy camaraderie that he has with his offense a lot of respect. A lot of respect, and frankly, I thought it spilled over to the defense. All the defensive guys were coming over and teasing and joking with him. You can tell they respect the heck out of him and really want to play well for him. Yeah, he did not want to go down there as he carries tacklers for a solid gain of nine. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up. And we'll break that one soon. On second down now, Dickerson. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Second and one if people want to run the football. This is from every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Manning now on first down. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. On second down, Dickerson. A very tough run, but for a short gain out near the 32. A gain of two there on the heels of a one-yard pickup on first. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. Now Manning. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. <laughs>
Dickerson trying the right side. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game, so what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, there's nothing but room to run. Oh, that's into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off here, the 32. And they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. So here are the Jaguars in great field position already. And out will come the leader of this offense. And that, of course, is their signal caller. And this could be a whole lot of fun because if his game plan goes into effect early, we're going to see some shots downfield, aren't we? What did he talk to us about? Stretching the field. Wants to open things up for not just his receivers, but for anything underneath. Well, that was the theme, the front page of the sports section with the column this right possible air raid. So we'll see. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the coaches view that, right? What? Who gave away the game plan? <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious, though. That'll help them win. Now a second down and six. They'll look to throw here. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. The turnover put them in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. You got to cash in and get some points. They haven't made much of this great starting field position they had. Here's third and six. He'll look to throw. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. Good contain. No gain on the screen, and it'll bring up fourth down. The whole idea of the screen pass is to fool the defense in a big way and create a big play. They weren't fooled. Not <laughs> one second, not one bit. How about them figuring it out, diagnosing it, and spilling it for lost yardage? Now a field goal try coming up here for the Jags. Spotted at the left hash, this from 45. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. And the Jaguars grab a 3-0 lead. In the end, the opening drive, Charles does yield points. Maybe not the touchdown that they wanted, though. Yeah, but bottom line, they wanted to get something out of that drive, and they did that. Three points, they won't turn that down at all. Scobie now to kick it away after the made field goal. This fielded right at the goal line. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. He'll look to shake off the interception on the opening drive. He should at least be comforted that it resulted in three, not six. And if I were him, I would be the guy all the way out on the field greeting my defense now, saying, thanks a lot. He held him to a field goal after I turned it over. That's a big defensive stand. It got his man complete. And all the way down to the 42. A big play there for Indy. We always talk about the guy who paid off the play, don't we? Got caught it or ran it. But how about the elements that go into making a big play? This one in particular, able to scan the field. Pocket held up nicely. What a terrific job by the offensive line. The route well run, and the football right on the money. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Now a give, right side, Dickerson. And he'll get it down on the plate of the 37. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Here's Manning to throw. 
It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. A defense loves to hang their hat on that, don't they? You get a guy that catches the ball, but you stop him for no gain. Without a doubt, because they're also used to trying to catch people after the catch, and they miss. And that turns into what? A huge play. We've seen it so many times. In this case, though, catch was made, put down right on the spot. And he's got him. Got his man on the end round. Complete. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Dickerson on the handoff, and he'll take this one down near the 15. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. On second down now, Dickerson. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A 15-yard touchdown run. And the Colts have taken the lead. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. team on the field now as they will send this one away. Taylor now from the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And he hits his target, the tight end Lewis. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. The Jags with the football to begin the second quarter. So second and four from the 22. Second and four. And Jones has it over the middle. Here we go. Here we I go. think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. First and 10, Taylor now. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Well, speed is definitely a calling card if you play cornerback in this league, and he does a terrific job there of hustling in quickly to make the play. And you can just see that whole play developing. That's where, as a defender, you just lock in on your target and say, I'm not even thinking about breaking stride. I'm running straight for the belt buckle because where it goes, 
that's where you find his body, and he was able to get in there and make a great play. And the final number here in terms of the top speed that he hit, absolutely absurd. Next Gen Stats has him at better than 23 miles an hour on that one. Now he dumps this off over the middle, and he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Back to throw. He's got his tight end. It's Chris Manhurts. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Caught on the right side by Jones. Some extra space following the display of power. Down just inside the 45. Second down and three. On the handoff, this is Taylor. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Let's face it, when you have a guy who can pick up those types of runs and keep the chains moving or stay ahead of the chains, you're making everyone else on offense happy because you're opening things up to allow for a whole lot of different play calls. They'll look to throw now on first down. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. He'll go down as a gain of six, and that'll make it a second down. Looking to throw. Complete to Jones. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. They'll try and run for the first with Taylor. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. I actually love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers, and they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. The give to Taylor. And they'll get to him just inside the 15. Even after the strong run we just saw, they're able to corral him quickly defensively. It'll be a five-yard pick up there, and it will take us to the two-minute warning. Two minutes to play in this first Wait half. 7-3, our score. Second and five. Caught right side. It's Lewis. And it looks like he'll be just a yard shy of the five here as he's out at the six. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. They'll look to throw. And it's caught. 
Hammering for the goal line. He loses the football. And the Colts pick it up. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. A lot of talk this week about ball security. In fact, they added an extra period in practice to be more secure with the ball. It didn't work out there. Well, sometimes you just get overexcited during the game. You may all of a sudden make your catch, see some open field, and decide you're going for it, and not realizing the danger lurks while you're doing so. And there's your end result right there. So the fumble recovery, and now Manning. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Throwing now is Manning. And this all incomplete. He tried to check it down to his running back and nearly had the ball picked. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they had incompletions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. On third down, Dickerson. And they're going to drop him well shy of the first as he can only make it to the 11. Now a timeout called for by the defense as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. The Colts send out their punter as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. And now out come the Jags. And so close to hitting pay dirt last time, fumbling down near the goal line. Now, how does that affect their psyche this time around? It's a tester, that's for sure, because to be that close and come up with no points is really disappointing, not just for the guys on offense, but the defensive players, too, who thought, hey, we're going to put some points up and have a little momentum going. they got to find a way to just get it out of their minds, let it go, -term memory. and move on to the next series. A good rally to the football keeps him to only a yard, and it's second down. Now the Jags are moving quickly in the hurry up. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Jaguars first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. First down now, but the clock continues to move. He'll look to throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll be second down. And unless this is a quick incompletion, this is likely the last play here of this first half. And offensively, they'll take the timeout with six seconds left in the second quarter.
So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. This will be spotted just shy of midfield. A 59-yard attempt. And his kick is indeed good. And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. So they wind up turning the turnover into points as they convert there for three. Yeah, that was a nice job there to force the fumble. They recover, hand things over to their offense, and then the offense went down and got them three. That alone, that's not enough to win a game, but both units able to do their jobs on these last two drives. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The final second ticks by and that's going to do it for the first half of play. So we hit halftime here in Indianapolis with the Colts on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First up, though, a look at the next-gen stats for Jacksonville in that first half. And they did not do much at all in terms of throwing the football in those first two quarters. That's going to need to improve if they want to erase this deficit. Meanwhile, for the Colts, we check out their numbers on the ground as they'll try to keep the momentum going into the second half. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. The Jaguars with work to do. They trail here as we are back underway on EA Sports. Taken at the goal line. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. The Jaguars ready to get going to start quarter number three. It's been a tight game to this point. What do they need to do, Charles, to break through in the second half and take the lead? Well, I think the first thing they need to do is thank their defense for keeping them in this game. And you know what I think the defense is saying back to them? Why don't you guys focus on getting some first downs, put some drives together, give us a little bit of a break here. If we can get some rest, we'll play even better for you. And oh, by the way, pay off a few of those drives with some points, too. 40 yards rushing for him now, and he's carried the ball just five times. That one definitely helps as they try to push the ball down the field here, trailing early in the third quarter. And even though they're trailing, not abandoning the running game. People may call it an adjustment. I think it's just much more sticking to what works for you and continuing to have faith in it, and the running game is starting to pay off. One play has him to the 37 here for first and 10. Here's Taylor. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. So statistically, both of these offenses have a rough time getting a running game going. But boy, what a nice play there defensively. Tackling him behind the line, but you're right. You look at the numbers. Neither side looks on track in the ground game. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Back to throw here. Jones has it. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. down as he's up to the 48. I haven't met a football team yet that runs the ball successfully that doesn't talk about having an attitude to be a running football team, right? You got to be able to put your nose in there, smell where the first down sticks are, and get there.
Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Now back to throw. Now he's flushed out right. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble. And it's second down. Now a handoff, Taylor with it. And he'll go down, shy of the 40 at the 41. A gain of four Let's last go, play, they double that here and get eight. I don't care what anyone says, I want a big time back in in this kind of yardage each and every time I step on the field. A tone setter, these guys are hard to find.